All right, let's go back to discord. I know we don't normally do this anymore, but just because some people wanted it, it's right before a holiday. We're hearing from some folks via discord at davidpackmancom slash discord. Let's go next to Carl from Boston. Carl from Boston. Welcome to the show. What's uh, what are you up to today? What's on your mind? Carl from Boston, you've been invited to join the show. Please accept. Hi, sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. You're on the air. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, you can. Okay, perfect. Um, so hi. Uh, first of all, congratulations on your kid. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> hey, uh, um, I was wondering what your take is. I was watching the debate live, and then right after it ended, there was breaking news, and they were saying a lot of the. Uh, quote unquote, like leading Democrats are probably thinking of like last minute pulling out Joe Biden and maybe putting in someone else. I don't know who it could be, maybe like Kamala. I'm not sure. I was just wondering what your thoughts on that. Do you think it would be a smart idea to do it this late in the race? So I've already given kind of my full take on this. I do not know the answer because keeping Biden has risks and uh, replacing Biden has risks. But I take issue, Carl, with this idea of top Democrats replacing Biden. Biden has the delegates to be the nominee. The DNC mm -hmm. rules are that those delegates are up to Biden to release. So this idea of taking it, listen, you can pressure Biden to step down. His family right. can. You can show him polling if that polling comes to be that says you're going to lose. I don't think we have that yet, but it is ultimately up to Biden. It's not up to Kamala Harris or Nancy Pelosi or Chuck Schumer. Biden has the delegates and it is up to him to release them. So I don't know what would be best. My view right mm -hmm. now is I want at least a couple of weeks of polling to see what the change is to then have a better sense of whether uh, Joe Biden stepping aside would be a logical thing. Yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah. That's OK. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, I was just wondering, like, if everyone calls him sleepy Joe Biden, why doesn't he look so well rested? Right. Well, listen, Trump's the one who slept through his criminal trial. So I think that that's not an apropos nickname anymore. Yeah, he did a lot more than sleep through his trials, I heard. But <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for your time. All right. Thanks, Carl. Yeah. The anything else Trump did during his trial, I certainly didn't uh, didn't hear about. So I'll re uh, I'll reserve judgment on that as well. All right. Let's go next to Ty from Georgia. Ty from Georgia. Welcome to the show. Hello, David. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. OK, so I got to admit, I'm a little scared after here seeing the debate. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't know. I'm kind of like I really kind of wish they would have had a fact check person there. But I, I feel like even then they're just going to believe whatever Trump says. So if you like yeah, and the candidates, I mean, it was part of the agreement that there be no on screen fact checking. If they don't even want on screen fact checking, they're definitely not going to allow fact checking as part of the debate. Yeah, that's unfortunate. There is one thing I've been kind of thinking of, though. Is you know how one of the biggest things they brought up to criticize Biden is the Afghanistan withdrawal, right? Yes, yes. Which is was bad. But what I think is really weird is a lot of them want to cut all funding to Ukraine. So it's just if Rush if Trump wins, he cuts all funding to Ukraine, Russia takes over Ukraine, Ukraine ceases to exist. Is that something that they'd want? It seems like I mean, listen, you, you'd have to ask them. I think one of the one of the uh, unfortunate realities about a lot of these issues is that th we have an we have a, a movement right now, MAGA Trumpism, that's willing to say absolutely anything, even if it conflicts with what with what they said yesterday or their stated principles. And so your question is a good one, which is, wait a second. What about this? What about that? It doesn't seem to make sense. You're asking the question as if they care about consistency at all and they don't. So it's sort of like we think we've got them, but they just don't care. And so it doesn't matter at the end of the day. Yeah, it's just a really unfortunate thing because it's just like I know what like a lot of them will say, like the Democrats are communists, which is, as you know, is a ridiculous thing to yeah. say. But it's just so many people believe that and it's just so many people will believe all these things these people say, which. Yeah. And then you yeah. go to them and you say, what are what are some examples of communistic policies that Democrats have put in place? And they either have nothing or they name something that's not communistic. But then it doesn't matter for a lot of people having that moment where you go, you know what? I can't think of anything communistic they've done. It could trigger a light bulb moment, not for these people. 
Yeah, I think ironically, I feel like the Republican Party today has more in common with the Chinese Communist Party than the Democrats do. In some that's ways, that. in some yeah. ways, that's true. But yeah, I don't think we need to pull in communist analogies yeah. to argue that MAGA Trumpism is, is bad of its own accord. Yeah, that uh, makes sense. I'd say so. All right, Ty from Georgia. Great to hear from you. Very much appreciate it.